The title is Proposal for a Sovereign and Democratic Digitalization of Europe. So, well, I will introduce myself, of course, but I will introduce Roberto Cuillo, who is Head of Communication and a close collaborator of the prematurely deceased President of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, and staff of the Vice President of the European Parliament. And you will now understand why we will have this joint presentation, which is also providing a framework so that you can understand why we're here in Barcelona and in Catalonia. Then myself. Well, I'm Simona Levy. I'm coordinator of XNet. We are an organization that since 2008 works on democratic re renewal in the digital area. So digital transformation is currently at the center of the European agenda. You know that there's two pillars, environment and digital. We know this because of the European funds, because of the speeches, but suddenly COVID has brought along this topic and they are central in public agendas. So, based on the pilot project of our democratic digitalization plan, we have seen some gaps related to the foundations with which societies are becoming digitalized. These observations were shared with the prematurely deceased president of the European Parliament, David Sassoli, who commissioned a report with recommendations and specific proposals as an instrument and tool to open up public itineraries to promote a more democratic digitalization. This is how this report we're now presenting was born. And the report is called Proposal for a Sovereign and Democratic Digitalization of Europe. Let's start giving you a definition. What do we understand as a democratic digitalization and sovereignty. Democratic digitalization, it is a digital transition based on human rights through design and by default. Through design and by default. This is very important. Thus, we cannot uh, put uh, to our tools and to give a name as a virtual space that will profile uh, our strategies and a very friendly they offer us um, a button uh, to turn on and to turn off the framework. We want our space thanks to our design and by default. Sovereign digitalization. When we talk about uh, sovereignty, okay, we talk about the armies, we talk about nations and countries. I'd like to offer you a new definition. Sovereign digitalization. It is a digitalization where also the tiniest stakeholder for democracy architecture, so each and every one of uh, the citizens will master with a non-intermediate manner the use and the destination of created contents and generated data. Digitalization is only a priority for the European policy agenda, but digitalization for more than half a century has already been implemented. The issue is not only that digitalization will be produced. The w digitalization must be inclusive, must respect fundamental rights. It will benefit the majority of citizens or not. Once institutions talk about digitalization, but not only institutions, when the mainstream narrative talks about digitalization, they usually talk about big problems such as 5G, AI, supercomputing, digitalization, participation, and all of these things, right? However, there is a inevitable layer before uh, everything that makes possible the daily digital life and whole society activities from social services to individual use. We talk about internet access, content creation, the uh, stockage of uh, contents, the interconnection online uh, through email, chats, n surfing the web. This layer I'm talking about we took it for granted. In reality, it really needs a very serious analysis and assessment to warranty that uh, 
digital feature in Europe won't be built over uh, toxic um, foundations and will attack European values. Are you following me? Okay, cool. So, once this uh, basic layer of uh, daily digital life is violating systematically people's rights, everything that we will make with this layer will be happening inside a framework without democratic guarantees. There will be in a cloud where we stock data in a non-sovereign manner with the definition of individual sovereignty. This is just a mere example. Thus, we believe that the responsibility is on the hands of the institutions that should execute their role and the success of digitalization cannot be produced distracting as collateral damages of privacy. It is the starting point of a model that will guarantee these rights in a sovereign manner to comply with the democratic principles, being able to audit, this is important, to audit the tools, the infrastructures, digital uh, infrastructures to know what they are executing through code creation it will be accessible and it will be able to be audited in a distributed and non-intermediate manner so we do have a car let's say we don't know anything about mechanics but it is important to be ready to open to see the engine of the car with total independence about who is going to solve the problems in the engine but we need to know that the educational uh, life and the daily life should actors should be able to verify and to double check what is happening inside the engine from this perspective only open source tools will satisfy this prerequisite we talk about open source and we think about open source not because it's only open and in many many cases it's not adapted to all people's needs but we need to bear in mind, as Florian said, we do have already a tool that is a healthy tool. We don't have to invent anything at all. Everything is auditable. We can audit everything. The things that cannot be audited, it's like a private fields during the Middle Ages. We had a free space that it's not free anymore, but the essence and the nature, it is to be easy to get audited. I don't know if it's free. We'll talk about freedom later. But we need to be audited. Open source has another fundamental advantage. It contributes to boost the social and technological entrepreneurship which is available for everybody. Always together, in a rational manner, it can make last at the public investment, something that cannot happen with a proprietary software. We give some money to a private companies, no one can audit. If you don't like it, well, you are throwing away the money and you need to hire again. You cannot improve the code if you don't like it and if you hire a private company. This digit basic uh, daily life digitalization layer will be offered in a much more intense manner by very few stakeholders such as Big Techs and GAFAM, we talked about it in the previous uh, conferences, also in the context of uh, essential services and in essential institutions, it is something that is uh, showing a wrong signal. It is a sentence by Sergio Salgado. It is not only a problem of rights, it is a problem also for the market. If the concept is only for the market, let's work for the market. So we are sending a wrong signal to the market. We are saying that digitalization could happen sacrificing SMEs, sacrificing innovation as an ability and a valuable ability and skill for human beings and sacrificing also human rights. On the other hand, the practical solutions that we are offering in this report uh, want to offer the opportunity to restructure economy from the perspective of uh, sovereign and democratic digitalization, where human rights are the raw materials for a company design that has to be better distributed. In this report, we face three main fields that are essential for a daily digitalization. Those three fields are the next ones. In those three fields, we indicate how institutions can change the direction to be correct. 
the first chapter to navigator it was a chapter written by Sergio Salgado that uh, works with us at Xnet the navigator is an essential infrastructure without we will be excluded uh, from the digital space if we don't have enough technical knowledge of Firefox from Mozilla it is the older browser uh, that put at the center human rights and has at the main core to respect privacy after a glorious period it's agonizing due to uh, some market practices that come with the support of the institutions after the information published by Mozilla recently around 88% of the income that they get are made through an agreement through Google Google is the main source of incomes for Mozilla right now Chrome the browser Google's browser is uh, getting 70% of the market before uh, Chrome Firefox was the one that uh, was the browser that was most commonly used it is not difficult to see and to understand that uh, Firefox belongs to his main competitor this entails a problem and institutions should be reactive with this regard we want Firefox to be a common infrastructure second field the interpersonal communication system, uh, the so-called email, in a chapter developed together with Alex Puch uh, that works at Kailum Lab. Another vital structure are the emails, the, and uh, it is very difficult to work uh, properly with emails uh, without any previous reason, apparent reason, to make the things to work well. So the availability of the email uh, does not justify technical problems. The only technical issue that we can detect are uh, is that institutions well have say no to the right of not violating. It is a right that was conquered in Europe in uh, the 18th century in Europe. In uh, something that we got in Barcelona in 704 was the secrecy for communications. Once again we must uh, fight for uh, w the rights that we got in 704 emails freely offered despite it is kind of a very expensive maintenance service so we are offering gmail and outlook for free but it is not only managing the uh, server the email servers it's complicated to maintain it is the entry point of bid tech through massive digitalization of people, institutions, and public services. Institutions, they get Outlook and uh, Gmail for free, and uh, finally they acquire the whole suite that comes together with Gmail, like it happened in Catalonia, 12 over the 17 regions in Spain. They signed agreements, similar agreements with Google, as well as in other regions in Europe. They distributed, uh, well, the... Uh, role uh, through Microsoft and Google. Gmail is for free, increasing competition, creating a monopolistic uh, email should be for free for citizens, but this is not the way. This is a private de facto monopolistic uh, tool in such an essential element which is interpersonal communication. On the other hand, these uh, services are, have been updated uh, through its design as a centralized service. This creates important problems for the secrecy of uh, sending emails, also a problem for sustainability. And it's an absurdity. In the networks era, we must uh, write amongst us. We need to get through a pivotal uh, point. It's nonsense. Once we design from a corporation perspective, the only reason for things to be like this are just trying to dominate the system. That's why in our report, we propose that institutions should be the responsible to have a decentralized communication system, a sovereign system that will replace the nowadays email system. And this is the last third, okay? Everything correct. But the third field that I want to share with you, which is the last one, 
that has been our starting point from the educational sector. It must be an scalable infrastructure in order to create and to stack uh, data for our daily lives, uh, for our common life in the internet, inside and outside the school life. Around 80-95% of data, as well as the contents created by European citizens, are created and are stuck in a big tech uh, clouds that do not belong to Europe uh, sovereignty, and it has an impact on society and the possibility to research and to innovate through data. For this uh, three layer, we have the Exnet educational plan and the uh, promoters family. In 2019, several Barcelonan uh, families they were encouraged to the fact. Uh, of the uh, reality of uh, systems, uh, they only in the schools of his children, only data and content were uh, developed and managed by big techs without Moodle was being abandoned uh, because it was uh, too complex and it was difficult to update and the cloud that we're using belonged to Google. That's why some of the uh, affected and impacted families wanted to work together with the CSNET, uh, together with the support of the families associations in Catalonia, together with XTEC. We launched the democratic educational plan in Catalonia, including a digital tool that would replace the so-called DD. Democratic Digitalization Tool. We presented this plan to all the institutions and the municipality of Barcelona wanted to launch a public tender for some companies to include this uh, system and to develop the uh, code. The City Council and the Consortium for Education allowed to develop this uh, pilot project in uh, different schools. Nowadays it's implemented in 11 uh, Barcelona schools. Well, hackers say that it's useless uh, to solve uh, twice a problem. We won't have to solve uh, twice the uh, same problem. In reality, we didn't invent anything. Tools uh, necessary to create alternative already exist, but they do need the institutional commitment to improve and to be at the level of big tech tools. It's absolutely possible. Didi and the different uh, structures, uh, mainly for music, and to get developed through the municipality of Barcelona. It's something that can be audited and can send information, uh, such as Nextcloud, Moodle, Beagle Button, WordPress, and many others, Etherpad, many others that we'll talk about it tomorrow at 4 p.m. The main goal of Didi it is to create a public, uh, something auditable, and user-friendly like uh, big tech tools, interoperability and to be sovereignty and to have sovereignty. It, this is possible. Now it's time for institutions to implement it and to offer more robustness. Also, we need to count with the commitment of uh, public institutions. They must uh, make this possible. Sometimes they do not have enough uh, budgets that should be paid by the main responsibles. In order to conclude, let me tell you that our report talks about two uh, prerequisites that are cross-related. First of all, a digital gap. We won't talk about digital gap because this is not the moment. I don't have time to talk about digital gap. But in order to close the gap, this is a very important thing that I want to talk about it. It has to do with the second cross-related uh, condition, the, word, the bad practices in public tenders. Claudia Deso, the main researcher of the Masters of uh, Rights uh, in the Digital Era at the University of Barcelona together with Marial, which was the previous author for the Competition Authority in Catalonia together with uh, Xavier Puzzole. The systematic violation of national and European regulation when uh, launching public tenders that from 2014 will oblige institutions to create different uh, loads and different demands to foster the role of the SMEs and the absence of clauses to respect digital rights makes very difficult to develop in a sustainable manner, in a qualitative manner, local companies working in the digital fields and areas and also to launch auditable uh, software. 
this democratic and sovereign digitalization needs to get through policies fighting against monopolistic institutions, reaching the SMEs, putting into place the European legislation that will foster the right to be an entrepreneur in a much more democratic digitalization. Laws exist, but they are not implemented. Here you have some European data to create some licit uh, tenders. Uh, the last uh, important tender in Catalonia for digitalization the, was uh, 62 million uh, euros. I don't know how many of you have an SME. I don't know if you will face uh, this kind of 62 million tender. But data in the European Union shows that less than 30% of uh, public procurement can be achieved, in average 50%. So this is not possible in Europe, and mainly in this region, the uh, small companies only get 30%. This is a vicious circle. Big uh, companies, they always get the public tenders because the auditable code uh, sector cannot face big deployments. The auditable codes cannot face big deployments because it is not allowed to improve and to keep on growing because there are no opportunities for this kind of code. Also, governments are asking for citizens to buy locally to reactivate economy but they are not an example to follow and they are offering the tenders to the biggest uh, in international corporations. So we should allow uh, the presentation of big techs in, with products which the cost should be zero. So with a monetary value of zero, such as the education, health, uh, emails, offered in a free manner, uh, the main risks for competitors are related with the next idea. First of all, this is happening outside the public procurement, as we previously said. With the excuse of a zero cost, they are never in a tender. So there has never been a public tender for the XTech email service, but they are offering massively free email services to all the education communities. So the uh, playground, it's not equal for everybody. Some competitors, they have more advantages, the biggest ones, and these, uh, well, uh, corporations cannot be violated at all. I promise that I'm reaching to my end. In conclusion, I hope that there is a clear idea that we are asking to public administration to be more uh, responsible. And those uh, companies that are not very committed, we want public administration to be responsible. We citizens, we need to use non-auditable uh, resources because we cannot get adapted but once an institution still uses non-auditable uh, open source they are violating on a systematic basis rights of population not only digital rights uh, rights but also the freedom to be an entrepreneur and also the uh, legal uh, protection well we citizens we uh, work together together in schools and together with different initiatives such as DD. Thank you so much.